Now, on the uh, second page here, we're going to draw on the two asymptotes at x equals negative 3 and then x equals positive 3 and look at the behavior. On the last page, the as you approach the x equals negative 3 asymptote from the left side, the function value became quite large. It was 666, etc. Okay, quite large. As you approach from the right side, the function value became a very large negative, so it means that you're going way down like this, close to that asymptote from the right. The x equals 3 asymptotes here, as you approach it from the right side, the y value was a very large negative. As you approach from the right side, the y value was a very large positive. And the end behavior to the far right, it was approaching 0 from above and the same towards the left. Now, there are no x-intercepts, and I'll discuss why here. Um, first of all, you see the horizontal asymptote is, is the uh, y equals 0 or the x-axis. And so notice this insinuates that it does never touch, not ever touch the x-axis. And so because the x-axis actually is a horizontal asymptote. Now, if you take a look at the function, see so you find x-intercepts by saying the function to 0. So I actually would be doing this. I'd be saying, okay, this is going to equal 0, but there's no way to get it to equal 0 because if I go to solve for uh, uh, x here, what I would do actually in this equation is multiply by x squared minus 9 on both sides. And that's how I get rid of the rational part. So that divides out with that. And I would be left with 4 equals, and you see 0 times anything is 0. And we get 4 equals 0, which is a ridiculous equation. 4 can't equal 0. So there is no solution to 4 over x squared minus 9 equals 0. Now, there is, however, a y-intercept. And we find the y-intercept by putting 0 in place of x. So 4 over 0 squared minus 9 uh, equals just negative 4 ninths. So just a close to negative a half on the y-axis. Uh, we'll put a point here, negative 4 ninths. That's meant to be negative 4 ninths. That's the y-intercept. Now to graph the function, we're kind of filling in the rest here. And so to have all these characteristics, this must join together. This is actually a local maximum point here. Otherwise, when you go to the uh, left, it goes down. To go to the right, it goes down. And of course, this will join together here as well. So that's what our reciprocal of this quadratic function looks like. That's the graph. Now to state the range of the function, the range is all real numbers with uh, two restrictions. Uh, groups of restrictions, not single restrictions like we're on the domain where 3 and negative 3 were the only numbers weren't allowed in the domain. Um, for this part and for this part, it's above the x-axis, so y is a positive value, y is greater than 0. For this part right here, um, the highest y value is negative 4 ninths, so y is less than or equal to negative 4 ninths. Notice it can, it can equal negative 4 ninths here. But it can't equal 0 here because the um, x-axis is a horizontal asymptote, so we just say y is greater than 0.